Morning, morning, everybody. Kane532 here. It has been a hot freaking minute since I've actually brought y'all a tutorial. I'm very sorry for that. I've been trying like mad to get this one tutorial idea out there, but I've ran into a lot of complications. Effectively, as the title suggests, I'm going to be showing you all how to get your PlayStation 2 to be able to read games from a network access storage. In the past, what I wanted to bring to y'all was to have something as simplistic as a Raspberry Pi running Open Media Vault so that you could access all of your games off of something super simple like a flash drive. Unfortunately, there was a lot of complications that I could not quite figure out. I even had a live stream about it for those of you that watched it, but there were just a lot of issues that I couldn't suss out, I couldn't find anywhere as far as uh, forums and whatnot to fix the issues, so I'm just going to stick with what I know. Now, for this tutorial, you're going to need a few things. Everything that I'm going to be providing you is going to be just what I suggest. First and foremost, you will need some type of computer. I've been using something like a microcomputer to handle a lot of these super basic things as far as running open Open Media Vault or TrueNAS or whatever the case may be. I've had great luck with that. I've had no issues as far as compatibility. Upload and download speeds are phenomenal. All of it's going to come down to components. You can definitely use an old computer that you got lying around, even an old laptop if, that you got lying around. Uh, as long as you can install Open Media Vault to it, it should work without a hitch. With the exception of the Raspberry Pi. The other thing that you are going to need, absolutely imperative, obviously, is going to be a PlayStation 2. Now, the PlayStation 2 that I will be using for this tutorial is going to be this slim silver model PlayStation 2. I like this one mainly because it already has an Ethernet port directly attached to it. That's not saying you can't use the larger fat model PS2, you just need some extra components. So the fat model PS2, like what I was talking about, this guy right here, the OG model, right? You can definitely use this, but you need an additional component. You need to have a network adapter, so it's going to be this guy right here. Now, this is the OG version, it's the hard drive expansion bay port. Uh, I had to do some work on it before so it didn't ha doesn't have the shielding. You do not need to have a hard drive attached to this. In fact, they actually make versions of this that work on the original hardware that just has the network, uh, the network ports on it. Additionally, you're going to need some way to actually get your PlayStation 2 games onto your network access storage. So that's where this guy right here comes into play. This is just a basic disk drive, okay? I paid maybe 15, 20 bucks for this at Walmart a couple years ago. It's done me great for the last couple years. I haven't had any issues with it as far as reading and writing or doing anything with it. So I definitely recommend that. If you can't get your hands on that, you could probably look at an older, like an older laptop. So most older laptops do have disk drives still attached to them, or even if you have a super old computer, your old computer might still have a disk drive attached to it. So that is what I recommend. I don't really recommend downloading games because I'm kind of against the piracy thing, especially because of uh, YouTube not liking piracy. So um, don't demonetize my video, YouTube. Thanks. I'm not promoting piracy. I'm not, I promise. Finally, you are going to need, obviously, your hardware components. Speaking of piracy, <laughs> or not piracy. Anyway, these are the games, right? So these are all the games that, uh, well, I have a lot more PS2 games, but this just is the, uh, the eye candy for y'all. So this is going to be the library that I'm going to start with. We are going to show the process on taking all of this, putting it onto your computer, uploading it to your NAS, and then running it on PlayStation 2 original hardware. That does it for the hardware components, so now let's talk a bit about the software components, because yes, you need hardware and software to make this work. Go figure. I know a lot of people get scared when we start talking software, but I promise this stuff is super easy to use. The hardest part is going to be getting Open Media Vault set up. Now, I'm not going to be providing a tutorial on how to install and set up Open Media Vault here on this video, I'm just going to be going over how to use it, okay? 
I will be going over a few smaller pieces of software that we can use, uh, but apart from that, it, it's super straightforward and easy. On the PS2 side of things, you're going to need to have some way to run homebrew software. So I prefer to use Freemic Boot. Okay, I've got my memory card right here. I got Freemic Boot installed on it. I think this one's running like 1.8. Uh, latest version is 1.96. I just haven't updated yet. Whatever. It will work just fine. We are going to need to be running Open PS2 Loader. It's probably one of the best backup managers for the PlayStation 2. When we're talking about working with it on a PC, I definitely suggest that you run all of this software on a Windows based machine because Mac tends to have some compatibility issues. We're going to be using a program called OPL Manager. Okay. It is a third-party managing software that you can dump games, like you can dump your physical games using this software, and then you can take that, put it on your NAS, and then we can just start running things from there. You don't have to use it, but one reason why I like it is that you can actually download your art, uh, you can download cheat packages, you can do, it, do a lot of stuff with OPL Manager. If you don't want to go through that hassle, though, you can definitely use something like Image Burn. All you really need is the ISO. Drop it onto your NAS and then you can just play it. It just won't look as pretty. And finally, you're going to need Open Media Vault. This is going to be the software that everything is running your NAS with. That's going to do it for all the software as well as the hardware components. So now it's time for me to stop blathering on about all the stuff that you need and jump right into the actual tutorial portion of this video. Once you've got all the hardware components set up, you got your PlayStation 2 hooked up to your network, you got your NAS all set up, and you have Open Media Vault installed. Now we're going to open up Open Media Vault, and we're going to start going through the settings on how to get that drive set up and populated with all of your PlayStation games. I am banking on the fact that you've already taken a flash drive, external hard drive, whatever it is that you have, and you've plugged it into your NAS setup, be it a microcomputer, be it an old desktop, or like me, you just have a Intel NUC. So I love that little NUC. Anyway, moving forward, once you've got Open Media Vault set up and you are signed in, then we're just going to go through. First thing that we want to step into is going to be our disk. Now the disk that I'm going to be using is this guy right here. Double check, make sure it's the right one. You don't want to accidentally format the wrong drive. Now, full disclosure, there are a lot of settings that we can be going through under Open Media Vault. I'm going to be going through the most basic and essential ones to get you set up and squared away for the best possible outcome. Once you've got your drive set up and selected, we are going to move down to File Systems. Now, right here, you're not going to be able to see your drive. We need to create what's called a file system. That's going to be how Open Media Vault accesses all that information. So go up here and click on the Create button. Under Device, you need to select your device. Now, if you don't see your device in here, don't freak out. All you got to do is you go back under Disks, select your disk, and click the Wipe option. Unfortunately, there's no real way around this. If you want to use your drive, you might have to wipe it unless you set it to the correct file format previously. I'm not going to go over how to do that because, like I said, basic stuff here, right? Okay, so wipe the drive, go back to file system. We're going to go to create. We are going to select our device, and we're going to set a label for it now. What I'm going to make it is just simply Kane's games I'm not gonna add any apostrophes or any of that nonsense because if you do then you might have some issues when you're trying to get it set up with your PlayStation 2 click OK and it says do you really want to format that this device all the data on it will be deleted please note that the file system creation may take some time now this is absolutely true the larger the drive that you have the more time it's gonna take to do now this is only about a 60 gig device if you're doing something like a 4 terabyte external hard drive it's going to take a very long time to do there's a cat on my desk tail click the yes button and then just wait for this process to finish now you can see down here 
it shows you what we're looking at is the number on the left compared with the number on the right. As soon as the number on the left matches the number on the right, you are all done. With that being said, I am going to let you speed through this at your own leisure. I will not make you sit through the entirety of this, this portion. All right. Once you got it says uh, down at the bottom, it says done. Now we can go down, we can click the close tab. You can see right here under our label, it says Kane's Games. We've got it set over here on the status. It's saying that it is trying to initialize. Once you see under status under in your label and everything that you just created, as soon as it says online, you need to make sure that you go up and you press the mount button so you want to mount that file system so that we can actually use it when we go to create a share you see this banner that comes up on the top that uh, it says this configuration has changed you must apply the changes in order to in order for them to take effect click apply hit yes now oftentimes I haven't had much luck with it but you can make multiple adjustments and multiple changes to the configurations and then you can apply all of them all at once but that hasn't really worked out for me it might be because I'm using the Intel NUC I don't know but I like to just apply everything as I do it so you're gonna see me doing that a lot once you have the file system set up it is online and it has been mounted what we need to do next is go down to shared folders that's going to be under the access rights management now right here you see I already have a couple shares set up I'm gonna be showing you how to build your own okay so we're gonna click add we're gonna name it something so this is what the actual share is gonna be called I'm just gonna call it the same as the label it'll be Kane's games so I'm gonna click select a device down here click on that this part's super important if you want to just be able to have access to it unmetered guest access whatever the case may be you need to change the permissions so right now it's set for administrator can read and write. This means that any other user, like you you would have to input a name and a password. If you want to have access to everybody, click on permissions, go down to everyone read and write. Now this is the most unsecure method and it's only recommended if you're going to be running this on your local network system. So full, like I need you all to understand something if you open any ports directly to the internet you are allowing access to hackers to get to your system but if you are keeping this as just a local contained network access storage which means you haven't port forwarded anything then you are safe okay i've been running uh running it with permissions open to everybody for a hot minute but i have not port forwarded my actual nas to the open internet and that's why I'm able to do that. If you want any other further explanations, go and check out a guy. His name is Network Chuck. He is freaking phenomenal. He has so much good information. I'll leave a link to his channel down below. You can add a comment here if you want. So I'm just going to name it. Or I'm just going to have a comment that says PS2 games. Apply changes. Yes. After that, go down to services, and you want to go to SMB slash CIFS. This is how or our PlayStation 2 is going to be able to read the file structure, and it's also going to be one of the most universal methods to accessing our shared drive in the future. If you're running this on a Mac, then you can still do that, but it's a little bit more complicated. Oftentimes, if this is the first time running your Open Media Vault, you need to go to enable and then you'll click save and then you'll have to apply again. I've already done that so I'm not gonna do that or else it's gonna reboot my entire SMB share and I don't wanna deal with that nonsense. So from here, I'm gonna click over into shares. This is how we create the file structure that is accessible. So we're gonna click add. And again, our shared folder is the one that we've just created, Kane's Games. Comment, I'm not gonna bother with it public you need to make sure that guests are allowed because well 
you don't have to if you want to set up a username and account so that you can log into it and set it up that way you absolutely may but I'm just gonna set it up for guest access because it's the easiest so click that click save and then you're gonna click apply as soon as it pops up and then that is it you have just created a SMB share on your network that you can access from anything that you could feasibly think of you can access it from Android you can access it from a Mac and takes a few more steps you could access it from your PlayStation 2 you can access it from almost anywhere okay and I'll even show you how that's done you just go over you click on your file browser go down under network now mine is called NAS you can sit here right there Kane's games now the other two right here as you saw that's these right here so I have one two three four I have one two three four we're gonna open this up you can see that the folder is completely empty right now that's not a big deal one thing specific with open meet or open PlayStation 2 loader is you need to have the correct folder structure the bare minimum that you need is going to be to have a singular folder called DVD in all caps. So this is where all of your PlayStation 2 ISOs are going to go. Okay, so once you have OPL Manager downloaded, installed, you're just going to run the executable from wherever it is. I have a link to my taskbar, so I'm just going to click on it. Now this is how it's going to come up on your first run of it. You're going to have this little box right here that says, please choose your language. I'm going to use English because that's what I speak. I don't speak it well, mind you, but it's the easiest one for me. Go so click save. There's another window right here that says, that do I want to automatically check for updates on startup? I'm going to click no, just because sometimes it runs into a few issues. Click save. And now this one's going to be important. And so you need to select normal ISO, VLCFG, blah, 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 blah go under here for path and paste that in so that's where our games are going to be dumped we we'll give it another forward slash for it and then save it says right here don't worry about this error it says no cd or dvd or art folder found in this like the OPL folder please make sure this is the correct folder blah 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 okay would you like to create all those folders yes and as you can see it just created all of those folders that we needed So as you can see, it has created all those folders in there. The opening here is completely empty because we don't have anything in the DVDs folder. Now it's going to come to part where we take our games and start ripping them to our network access store. First game I'm going to run is going to be a, a game that's very near and dear to my heart. It's going to be Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, you're going to take your game, you're going to plug it, just to, you're going to place it, jeez, not plug, you're going to place your game into that DVD drive. You can do the next portion a few different ways. One, you can use OPL Manager to rip the game directly to your computer, or two, you can use IMG Burn to rip it that way. I'm going to use OPL Manager just because it's a little bit easier, I think. To do that, you're going to go up to Tools, Disk or convert to ISO. And look at that. It's already found the disk. Now the one problem that this has is you have to save it to your local C drive. So I'm going to change it. I don't we don't need this uh, beginning portion right here. That's just the uh, region code for it. So click save and then start. Now this process takes a little bit of time depending on the size of your game, just like anything else, right? This game is going to be about 3.7 gigs, so it'll probably take in the neighborhood of 5 to 12 minutes. So we're going to sit and wait for that to finish. Returned. Our look is done. I have so created successfully. <laughs> Fuck. 
All right, as we can see, the ISO has been created successfully. That's always a good thing. But once that's done, we need to now take that file and we need to upload it to our NAS. So we already got the folder still open. We're just going to use that and just drag and drop. So click the OK button. We're going to click the X button on that little icon. We can come down here. I am going to use the mouse click or the uh, scroll wheel click, excuse me, and that just opens up a new instance. So I saved it directly in the C drive. Right? Didn't I? Where is it? Once your ISO has been completely dumped, uh, not like the keen-eyed among you would probably notice that the, uh, the window layout is a little different. Uh, that's because I ran into some slight technical difficulties. I had to do some troubleshooting. Don't be mad. Anyway, I got the game ripped and everything is good to go. So now what we need to do is we need to take that game and we need to upload it to our NAS. Now I've already got the folder pulled up on my computer here. So we're going to click OK on that button. We're going to X out of that button. We are going to take our game, or games, plural. I have two right here. I have Evergrace and I have Kingdom Hearts 2. We're going to take these and we're going to drag and drop them directly to our NAS. Now, this is going to take either a very long time or very little time. Well, I have gigabit networking set up all throughout my house, but there are some slight difficulties, some slight issues. It should be fast, but as we see, it's not slowing down to three megabits per second. Um, with that being said, we're just going to pause the video and I am going to uh, skip ahead to where this is completely done. Once you've gotten everything transferred over to your NAS, I put in two games. I put in Evergrace and I put in Kingdom Hearts 2. You can go over to OPL Manager, click File, go to Refresh List, make sure you have everything completely updated and ready to go. Right now, everything looks really bland and really boring and just dumb, right? All we want to do, or all you have to do, is go up to Batch Actions, click on Art Download, and it's going to pop up this window here. All you need to do, I like to check all of the available boxes. Click start and it will automatically scrape the internet and it will find you all of the art that you need for these games. So it found everything. Operation has been completed. Excellent. So we can close out of that. You see right here we have the box art for both of the games that we just created. Awesome. Now we are going to move over to the PlayStation 2. Okay. <clears throat> so to get things set up, you first need to go to network settings. From here, what I would highly recommend you do, set ether or set the advanced options, just leave those off. You don't really need to bother with them. For your PS2, you want to set it to DHCP. That's going to dynamically allocate a IP address and everything for you. You don't have to mess with it. Down to SMB server, you can do this one of two different ways. One way would be to use just the IP address, and you could plug in your uh, your NASA's IP address, or you can set it to NetBIOS, and all you have to do is type in whatever the name of your NAS is. So mine, the implicit name is just NAS. Now that's not talking about the shared drives. Okay, there's two separate things. One is the actual uh, network name of your device, which for me is NAS. And the other is going to be the shared drive. That's this option here. So we can click this, and we, if you recall, the name was Kane's Games. Okay, once you do that, I'm going to click Start and it's saved right here. Again, I do not need to enter a username or a password. You leave those blank if you want to have guest access. Go down to reconnect. As long as you don't see any errors, you're good to go. Now the most important step that we need to focus on, click save changes. If you don't save changes, then you're going to have to go back and do it all over again. Okay. Settings have been saved. We're going to click circle, go back to our games list, and here we see both of the games that we've just uploaded. So you can see 
on OPL Manager. I've got it over here. If I move some windows around, you can see I've got the games themselves in the folders here. So why don't we go ahead and fire this up and give it a test run. And as you can see, it's got the original PS2 boot logo, and everything's going to run completely seamlessly. No disk in the actual PS2, and one of the other added benefits is, if you've got your house networked end-to-end -end like mine is, you could just take your PS2, pick it up, and put it anywhere in the house, and you have access to your entire library. The other massive benefit that gets overlooked when we're talking about getting set up and using open PST loader and running backups either off of a hard drive a flash drive or in this case a NAS the biggest benefit is that we are protecting the PlayStation 2's laser disc or laser drive because that's one thing that tends to go out on these older consoles we're preserving the PlayStation 2's laser laser array because a lot of times when those go out it's next to impossible to repair them or replace them it's not a fun process and sure you could sit here and you could adjust the accelerometer and all that sort of stuff but doing it this way just running all of your stuff from a NAS is so much easier you're gonna have a lot less issues a lot less wear and tear and it's just a lot nicer in my opinion thank you all very much for hanging out with me and I will definitely catch y'all in the next one happy modding